Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be solving problems on collision in one dimension um, Remember to check out the previous video where we talk about momentum which is basically the introduction to these problems So let's get to it So an elastic collision between two objects is one in which the total kinetic energy and the total momentum are conserved a uh, equation that we have up there is just the conservation of momentum where you can see that the initial momentum of the system must equal the final momentum of the system after the collision. Um, the second equation is just a derivation of the kinetic energy conservation equation as well uh, but I'm not going to get into detail on that one in this video because we're going to be solving inelastic collisions here. So one good example that we have for an approximation on elastic collision is in a pool table where one ball hits another ball. Usually the kinetic energy and the momentum are very well conserved here. You do have some kinetic energy being transferred to probably sound and then you have some friction as well. But it is a good approximation and that's why you usually use elastic uh, collision equations for those type of problems. An inelastic collision is one in which the total kinetic energy of the system is not the same before and after the collision. So the equation we have is that the moment the momentum of the first ball initial plus the momentum of the second ball initial equals to the sum of the masses times the final velocity. Um, that is for a perfectly inelastic collision, which means that when two objects hit each other in one of these perfectly inelastic collisions, the two objects stick together and then they travel within the same velocity, which is the final velocity. So you will only have one final velocity for the two objects. A good example is with a car accident, for example, when a car hits another car and then they start traveling together, then they stick together. So that is a perfectly inelastic collision. In this video, we're only going to be solving problems on perfectly inelastic collisions. So you'll see some examples with actual solutions. Problem number one. A 1200 kilogram car is stopped at a traffic light is struck from the rear by a 950 kilogram car. The two cars become entangled moving along the same path as that of the originally moving car. If the smaller car were moving at 20 meters per second before the collision, what is the velocity of the entangled cars after the collision? In this question, we can see that the collision is a perfectly inelastic collision, since the question did mention that the cars become entangled, so they stick together after the collision. So first, I will write M1 as the first car, which is 1200 kilograms of mass, and M2 is the second smaller car, which is equal to 950 kilograms. Remember, this is the moving car. So the velocity 1 or V1, which is the velocity of the first car, it's just going to be 0 meters per second because the question does mention that the first car is at rest. And the velocity of the second car, which is V2, it's going to be 20 meters per second as mentioned in the question as well. So we can just use the equation we saw for perfectly inelastic collisions. So that's M1 times V1 plus M2 times V2. These are just the initial velocities before the collision, or actually they are the momentum of the first car before the collision plus the momentum of the second car before the collision. That all equals the sum of masses, so M1 plus M2 times the final velocity. So we know that the term we're looking for is the final velocity, which is that one. We can just move over the sum of masses, so M1 plus M2 to the other side. So we can just solve for final velocity. So final velocity equals m1 plus v1, no, I mean m1 v1 plus m2 v2 over m1 plus m2. So the final velocity is just, we know that m1 v1 is just going to be 0 because v1 is 0, plus 950 kilograms times 20 meters per second, and that's all over 950 kilograms plus 1,200 kilograms. So the final velocity it's going to be equal to 8.83 meters per second. So now we can just move on to problem number two. Problem number two. A 10 grams bullet is fired into a stationary block of wood having mass of five kilograms. The bullet embeds into the block. The speed of the bullet plus block combination immediately after the collision is 0 0.600 meters per second. What was the original speed of the bullet? So in this problem is similar is similar to problem one, but the only difference is that we're looking for the initial velocity of the bullet and we do have already 
the final velocity of both objects. However, it is um, the same type of problem because it is a perfectly inelastic collision problem as well since the two objects um, have their own velocities and after the collision they stick together and they continue with one final velocity both of them so we can just write m1 which is the mass of the bullet is 10 grams and m2 is the mass of the block which is 5.0 kilograms we can start by converting the 10 grams to kilograms so 10 grams times 1 kilogram over 1000 grams is equal to 0 0.01 kilograms we can just write the equation as well so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals to the sum of m1 plus m2 times velocity final velocity we're looking for v1 in this case and we have every other variable the first thing we can do to make this easier on us is just eliminate the second term there m2 v2 since we know that velocity of the block the initial velocity of the block is zero since the question does mention that the block is stationary so now we can rearrange this equation uh, we know that v initial is going to equal m1 plus m2 times the final velocity and we can just do all of that over m1 so v1 equals 0 0.01 kilograms plus 5 kilograms that times 0 0.6 meters per second which is the final velocity over 0 0.01 kilograms again m1 the initial velocity of the bullet is equal to 300.6 meters per second i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much for watching